Hello all, my name is Lonis. I work for Outback and I'm here to do a webinar today. The topic is basically is going to be on optics and what I'll start with is where you can find optics on our website. So if you come over to Outback Power on the home page and if you scroll down There's the home page, click on home, you come down and you click on optics and you can sign in up here and if you want to create an account it's here and the create account will walk you through. I won't go through that process of it because, uh, well, I'd rather talk about optics. So this is my system and what I have is a radian and two charge controllers and it is uh, out on a small island in Everett, Everett, Washington. And right now I have a, let's see here, I've got a 5.7K array and I'm harvesting 3.1 kilowatts and it's a nice sunny day. Uh, word of warning, this is the temperature from the closest weather station to this location. Doesn't mean that every day this is going to reflect exactly where you're at, but it's a close approximation. Sometimes we're told, hey, that isn't really what my house looks like. But, you know, it's as close as we can get, so that's what we do. Gives you a, a temperature and a sunny day. So it lets you know, you know, the conditions you're under at the site. So this is what we call the donut. And what you do is you fill in the amount of solar, total solar, at, uh, when, you, when you fill out your form, you put in the total solar you have. Be aware that this is in kilowatts. So I have a 5,700 watts. So if I put in 5,700, it's going to be 5,700 kilowatts. And that's a bit more than my two charge controllers can control. So really I have 5.7K. So just be aware of that. We see that quite often when we're looking. So right now I'm selling back to the grid. The solar is producing 3.82. I'm selling 3.92. I have 140 watts worth of loads, which tells me I have a refrigerator on at my house. So I know my system fairly well and my loads. So that's it. Well, okay. So what you get up here is the flow from the solar down from the charge controller into the batteries out to the inverter. Some is divvied off to the loads and some goes right out to the grid. So that's, that's my system. I am selling back to the grid and this is what it looks like. So what's kind of fun about this is you're looking at that and you can come down well, before I do that, I have a system here, and if I hold the mouse over this, you'll see I have two charge controllers, and you can see exactly what they're doing. So without doing any buttons or anything, I could hover over that, and I can see my two charge controllers. I could come down over the batteries, put over that, I see the SOC, and I see the amount of amps being taken out from the inverter and the amount of amps going in on the DC bus from the two charge controllers. Go over here, it tells you uh, that uh, I'm grid tied and this is the load and this is how much is going out to the grid. So quick handy dandy things to look at. One of the nice things about this is we give you a graph. So it's a graph based on time and this is a single day and this is what we're looking at for a single day. It starts out at 7 in the morning or so, 6.30, 7.30 produces a little bit. We've got a nice boost right here and we're in the 12 o'clock hour. It hasn't reported. This, these lines uh, get updated every 15 minutes in an hour. So one of these in about a certain amount of time you'll see this jump up as it gets aggregated. So you got your, uh, your uh, legend up here where it tells you where everything's going. And one of the nice things about this is uh, you can look at today. Well, what happened to me yesterday? I went back and this is what yesterday looked like. You'll notice right about five or six, it must have clouded over. This is an interesting day. I was watching my solar and it really, throughout the day we had broken clouds and I would see my solar jump up to almost, well, it was 6,020 watts out of a 5.7K array. And it, I attribute that to the edge of cloud effect. So it's visible, you can watch it. One of the nice things that you can get here is a lot of information and the ability to troubleshoot over line. Here's my case in point. Uh, let's go back to today. And 
I'm just looking at this, and if you hold your mouse over the little contact points there, you can see this SOC is just varying between 100 and 99 percent. At night, drop down to completely full battery. Life looks pretty good. That's the SOC. I can come over and I can click on voltage, and it'll show me my voltage throughout the uh, the day and the evening. So right now, I'm at about 52 to 50.4 volts. 52.2 to 54.4. All right, gives you information. It's really nice to be able to see the SOC, click on voltage. And if you come down over here, you can click on the temperature. So if you click on temperature, it tells me the high and low within that, that time frame, and usually about an hour. So this is important. Right here, you could save a customer from just going look at the battery. So let's say we uh, were we up. Free our voltage, excuse me, we have temperature. I want to go back and look at the temperature over time. Did my batteries get exposed to anything super hot or super cold? Um, who knows? It's nice to see. Uh, let's go back and look at the three days. Hey, we had a dip right here. It went down to 59 degrees where my batteries were. And this is information from the temp sensor that monitors the, um, you plug it into whatever, uh, into port one, whatever's into that, and it shares that temperature with all of the equipment in the system. So this is a three-day view of my system. Well, let's go back to today. So let's go back to state of charge. So what happens? I'm sitting here and I'm harvesting, and let's say my array isn't quite doing what I think it should, and I want to try to do a little bit of view into troubleshoot and why. So I can come over to charge controllers. If I click on this, you'll see all of my aggregated solar. This is two charge controllers coming in today, uh, two charge controllers yesterday. So what about individual? If I come up here and click, I'll see each individual one, and you can watch the harvest from time to time throughout there. Now my arrays are exactly equal, and they're pointed exactly the same direction. The only time that they're gonna vary very much is in the early morning when the eastmost array is covered and the westmost array starts to get the sun first, opposite in the evening. The westmost sun gets uh, shaded by a little bit of trees while the eastmost uh, array gets a little bit more. So you'll see a little bit of variation through the day, but for the most part, they're pretty equal. You can see this is 2.1 and this is 2, so about uh, 0.1 kilowatt hour, 100, you know, Watt hours difference on this. Uh, port two on mine, I have an FM 100. Port three is my uh, Outback Extreme, the FM 80 Extreme. A little bit different. You can see that the uh, the, uh, the the FM 100 seems to be harvesting slightly better. Not a lot, but some. That's good. It's a new gear, and we're hoping to hoping it comes out and does real well. So this is nice because if you're sitting there watching this and you say. You know, three days ago, let's go back uh, 24, 23, 22, suddenly I lost part of an array or the entire charge controller. You could go back and say, hey, it worked up to this day, it worked up to this time. Is there anything that happened during that day and time that I should know about? Call up the customer and say, yeah, we had some guys up there cleaning the roof. Maybe they kicked a wire. Maybe they unplugged just uh, one string of modules. You could see it here. You may not notice it in the overall part of the system, but here you could go back and say, listen, I think you, I think there's something going on, why don't I go look? The advantage of this is you as an installer can go view your customer's site. You can see it from virtually anywhere in the world. I've monitored my system from Africa. I can control my system from anywhere in the world. I can be in Africa and uh, start a generator. I could drop the grid. I could do whatever pretty much I want. And we'll get into that a little bit later. So uh, let's go back to today. Here we are today. And what we're going to do is look at these various items here. So let's say I'm monitoring this and um, I want to make some changes. So what you do is you come over to device map, click on it, and what happens? The advantage of optics is too, you don't have to go and commission a car and drive out somewhere. What you can do is, you know, I know people that wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, 
click on their optic sites and look at each one of their customers sites and goes, hey, everything's fine. I don't have to worry about any of this. I can go on about my day. You can monitor things. You can make changes and view those changes over time, which is really powerful. So right now we're in the, we're in the device map. Everything looks pretty good. I'm going to go look at my inverter. All right, so these are all various screens that you can go to. So let's go to on the status screen. It just says this is what's going on. Gives you the firmware version. If you're ever curious, right now I'm selling back to grid, battery temperature, AC input, the frequency, the voltages. You can come down and you can see L1, L2, just various information. The left module, a little bit warmer than the right. It's been operating a little bit longer on, on a radian. The left one is the one that's usually on, and as more power is required, the right one turns on. So slight different voltages. Not much, but there is some. Just good to know. And you can come down and enable or disable the aux. So to make changes, you simply hit apply. Make the changes you want, and then go hit apply. So from here, this is mostly a status screen. So what I would do is come over to battery charging. Say you went and commissioned a site and you forgot the specs for the batteries. And now you're sitting there going, what voltage do I want? How long should I do this? Oh man, I can't remember. Cool, you go home, get the spec sheet. You can come in here and you can make changes to these, these voltages on the fly. So you can change this, uh, put it to where you would like come down and hit apply here, and those changes will be written to the inverter as you're sitting here. So this is really huge because how often do you forget something? You come back, you wake up in the middle of the night, your eyes are burning holes in the roof, and you go, oh, I forgot to do that. And then, you know, you can come back in, look at it, make the changes, or just view things how they are. So that's a good advantage. Uh, you can come over, uh, also down below here, you can see the battery protection, the cut in, cut out voltages. You can make adjustments to the mini grid mode from here, and you can make adjustments to the grid zero mode here. So all these things can be not only called up and adjusted, but, but installed in, and integrated into the system. So search, it's an older mode, but you gotta make your sensitivity adjustments here. Not a whole lot of people use search anymore, but you can go to the AC input, and you can make decisions right here. Do I want the inverter's charger to be on? This doesn't affect any of the charge controllers. You're just simply looking at your inverter and saying, you know, I'm gonna turn the charger off. Uh, AC grid's expensive. I know there's enough solar for me to charge from the solar, so I'm not even gonna let the, the, the inverter charge. Uh, you can select the priorities grid or gen and you know, make decisions based on what you're trying to do. You can adjust the charger limit. I mean, again, here's the case. I went out, I, I went to in, install these batteries, I put them in, but I forgot the spec sheet. What is the maximum AC charging amps that I need to set this to? So this is where you can limit the ability of the inverter to overcharge a battery, at least with current. You can do it by voltage. And uh, here's what brought this up. I was visiting a site, actually in training, and a guy said, your inverter is ruining my batteries. I went, really? Hmm. Well, what batteries do you have? And he told me, we looked up the specs, and it turned out the max charging DC amps that should go into those batteries was basically about 40, 45 amps. This charger, as an, you know, the, the radian charger can go up to 100 amps DC, slightly above that. So by limiting it, it just says, hey, I want you to charge the batteries, but at a certain amount, no more than this amount. Right now I have it set to six AC amps. So if you take six AC amps times 240 volts, that's about 1400 watts. If you divide your 1400 watts, by about 48 volts, your nominal voltage, that comes out to 30 amps. So you can make this adjustment to your DC amps on the AC charger. So, you know, down here you can choose uh, whether you're, what mode you're in. These are the seven different modes, and you can choose one. You can just tell it, yep, I want you to be grid tied, I want you to be in backup. All these changes can be made, and hit apply, and this will write out to your gear and you can make the necessary changes from your home. 
uh, AC output. You can just calibrate, you know, give your, your basic voltage output if you want. Aux control, you can turn it on, off. You can uh, make adjustments to the, the vent fan or the van. Choose the aux mode that you would like. So again, these are just adjustments that you can do. Stacking, we don't let you actually do the stacking, but you can adjust the power save level and the ranking. And the reason for this is stacking is usually a hardwired, uh, well, it is a hardwired condition. And if you try to change it without actually changing the wires, you can damage the gear and you know bad things happen. So we don't allow you to actually adjust the stacking, but you can the power save. So a calibration and uh, other. So under other, this is great for commissioning an assistant, a system. You can say auto. What will happen is on that radian, when you uh, uh, first start out and it's low power, just the left module's on. As the power picks up, the right module, both modules turn on. But it's a good test. I want to go, I, wanna, I want only the left working. I want only the right working. I want them both on all the time. Uh, we default to auto, and I would pretty much suggest you stay there unless you have specific range of so that's that's just what you can do with optics with a uh, an inverter. So let's go look at the uh, charge controllers. Pretty much the same thing. It tells me right now the charger state is bulk. The array voltage is this much. Array current is this much. Battery voltage is 53, and the output current is 46.6 amps. So this is the FM100, and you can see that labeled up here. So let's go look at the other one, uh, 46.6 amps. Come down here, and it's 43.4. So that's the difference so far is between these two uh, units. Is the, the FM seems to uh, harvest slightly better than the uh, 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 the extreme, which is cool because it's a new charge controller. I would hopefully see that. So that that's all good news. So and again, if you want to make adjustments, let's go back to the extreme out of the 100 and I can go in here and I can do the same changes. I can adjust the current output, rebulk voltage, absorb time, EQ time, all these things can be done. You can also do the auto EQ the amount of time and days. Again, make any changes you want, come down and hit apply and those changes will be written to the gear and it will continue on from that point. So here, here's a something that you know, uh, also, let's go back to, let's go look at the mate. So we have grid use timers. And from here, I mean, you could go to AGS and you could set up your AGS. And as long as it was wired, you can come down here and make your, your various changes that you want. Uh, volt start, you could do, hey, I want to make some changes and, and I can. So those are all good. So you got AGS, you got grid use. With grid use, where this has come about is in modern electrical grid systems, they're starting to vary uh, time of use. They're starting to change the rates according to, you know, what benefits them the most. Hey, you know, sun shines all day, so we're going to buy our power from you, but at a very low very low rate. Hey, but before the sun comes up between say five and seven in the morning, we're going to charge you double on your your usage. And after the sun goes down six to nine, we're going to charge you double there too. So what you can do is you can come in here and say, yes, I want to sell back to the grid. But my first interval is I'm going to drop the grid on the during the weekdays for uh, between five and uh, you know whatever those expensive times are. So you could just say, if you're the most expensive thing in town, well, why don't I stop using you during that time and I can run off my batteries during this high peak usage. And I'd go back, you know, the next interval, let's go back to the grid at a certain time, let's just sell. And then the third one is, let's go down and drop it again at some other point. So three things, you know, we can have three different grid use timers and uh, pretty nice. So we can come over to, let's go to the modes. And this is where you can uh, go to some of the uh, various things we can do. On the charger, you can turn a start a bulk charge, start, <laughs> start or stop a bulk charge. You can start an EQ charge and stop one. So valuable. Uh, inverter mode, on, off. Search, on, off, or search. Charger mode on or off on this, and grid type mode, what mode do I want, enable or disable. Uh, you could 
make these necessary adjustments from here. We've got global charge control. This is some of the advanced functions on the mate now. You can enable global charging and limit the amount of current into your batteries uh, should you need to. And here's a case in point. I have got a radian and two charge controllers. If I don't control that, I've got a set of batteries that can probably take about maximum 40 to 50 amps. Okay, so here's the situation. I've been selling back to the grid all day, got a beautiful thing, sun went down, my, I lost the grid. I ran my battery down to a low value overnight. In the morning, the sun comes up and I've got 5,000 watts of solar and you know we're seeing about 90 amps coming in. My batteries don't want to see except 90 amps. So this is where you can say, if I'm charging and then this is actually going into the battery, not just on the DC bus, I can limit those that charge from the solar to 50 amps. I've already limited it on the inverter to 30 or 40. And so these are just adjustments you can make to sell the battery to save the battery. Float enable just says if I've got two charge controllers or more and one of them goes to float, command all the other ones to go to float too. It just helps you, you spread the charge out over all of the unit. Auto grid kind of control, auto charge termination. These are all just advanced functions, functions of the mate that you can uh, adjust and apply. So here's another one. We got flex time. So in flex time, you can choose up to three different modes to operate. So you can choose the time you want to start selling, choose the time you want to be in grid zero, choose the time you want to be in mini grid. This is really powerful too, because again, I could say I want to, uh, my first mode is going to be from seven in the morning till nine at night, and I want to sell back to the grid. After that, I'm going to go to mini grid and my unit will function a certain way. After that, I'm going to go to another mode expecting it to function and you take advantage of the pre-programming um, pre of those modes to allow you to use your batteries down to a certain level, not use them at all. It just depends on what you're trying to do. These are all adjustments that have been come about because the grid is changing so rapidly over the world. We're, we're helping people in Hawaii, uh, we're helping people in Phoenix, uh, Florida, and basically all over the world. These modes are very nice to allow you to curtail your system to exactly how you want it to work. And I'll get into that a little bit more later on. So, we're almost halfway through, so let's see here. So that's the adjustments you can make. So, you can also, I have unsaved changes. See, this is pretty cool. I've, made, I've changed a lot of things and I didn't say apply. Would you like to discard them? Yes, I don't want to make, I don't know, really know what I did, so I'm not going to do anything. So here we are uh, at the device map. I can go over to event history. And this is what has happened to the unit. So right now you see it was powered up and powered down. It goes you, gives you back the, the date and the time when it came up and down. And you can just see various things that happened to it. Um, you can go up to uh, 50 items per page. I don't have very many exposed here because it just doesn't seem like I, I need them. So I'm going to come back over to the dashboard. And part of the power of this is this can save you from going out to a customer site and trying to find things. But it's more than just that because now you can monitor it and if you notice decreased usage over time, perhaps you could send a truck out there and says, hey, listen, I, I think your panels are dirty. I've noticed this degradation over time. Why don't I go out there and we'll send a guy out and clean your panels? It's work for you. It's work for your company. Uh, if he loses part of an array, you'll see it before he even notices it. So right now, i got a pretty good solar day, 5.7K. I'm harvesting 4.93. Uh, looks like my refrigerator's back on or maybe my freezer. And this little cogwheel over here, this gets you quite a bit of things too. A lot of people don't notice this. But if you click on that, you can put in photos of the system. So if you, you're going, man, I put this in, but I don't remember everything about it. I want to check. And you can come back and take photos that will help you. You can put notes into the system. You can have alerts email you. So if you say, I want to be emailed, you can click on this. 
and you can say I want you to email me if any of these things happen let's see all this warnings all these you could be emailed immediately hourly daily or never as I have I just don't have that much going on that I need it but if you're experiencing the trouble somewhere you could say you know if this happens why don't you email me immediately until I figure this all out so we've got profiles and uh, <laughs> this is my profile this is just my house my system and uh, what you can do is people with access what I've done is I've added people that can view my gear now I'm the only one that can make adjustments and I could have hey if you your company and you want uh, your next in line to be able to make adjustments or someone after him you could include him on this list you can allow him to get emails and you can allow him settings or not you could put your customer in here or not it just depends on what you're trying to do so that's all well and fine let me go back up over here and go back to the donut and you can have reports and some site stuff so uh, these are uh, some buttons down here they're just some easy buttons if you want to quickly do something uh, start a bulk charge generator running on or off the inverter on or off and the AC input user drop just some quick and easy buttons to go to if you if you want to get there quickly so okay so you've given people the ability to make changes. That's where this event history comes in because I can't tell you from working out at Outback how often I have had a customer call up and say your inverter isn't doing this or it should be doing something and it's not. And you go there and you walk them through the mate and then you come to same plot and you say oh well sir you turned you turned the inverter's charger off and it always comes down to well I didn't do that I was looking the other day but I didn't make any changes well we got tired of that so an event history if I do something to my system or someone's system via optics it will say Lonus Tuss made this change on this date at this day at this hour at this minute at this second you know exactly who did what if it's from internet you'll see the guy's name on the events if it's local you'll see a local person did this and you'll see the changes they made and the time so that's pretty important because you can say listen sir uh, this system was changed at this day and this time and it gives you a little bit of backup it, it's just nice so okay so we've got changes we can see everything uh, we can troubleshoot with this and one of the nice things about this is you got a history you can come back and look at the day of the week of the month of the year of and you can just kind of dive back in and get get uh, get information watch things uh, there was I'm gonna step away from this for a second and come down to some PowerPoints that I, I've created I was I had a gentleman, a uh, company, Haleaka Solar, in Hawaii call me up and say, Lonis, I've got a system, and I don't think it's, would you just make some, see what you think, do what you think is right. And he sent me an email, okay me to do this. Normally, I try not to touch customer's gear. I don't want to be responsible for somebody else's gear, just not what I do. But he gave me an okay, and I, I thought I'd look at it. And when I picked up the the, the system, it was in grid zero and what you can see is he's got this load structure and right away I went you know what that looks exactly like my house this is a refrigerator and a freezer turning on and off all day and all night he's in grid zero which says I am not selling back to the grid and I will not use the grid to charge so he's got solar and I see in the morning, this is in the morning hour, sun comes up, he goes through a quick charge, batteries goes up to 100%, and they stay there all day. Over the day they come down a little bit, wake up in the morning, go through an absorb charge. So this is uh, one day. So I'm going, yeah, right now with a 5K load from the grid was 4.8, solar contributed 1.1 kilowatt hour. 
So we got to looking at this, and this is where you go, oh, I see what's going on. With grid zero, we have to let one AC amp through. Part of the grid zero programming requirement was that I can't sell back to the grid and I can't use the grid to charge. So what we had to do is let at least one AC amp at all times come from the grid. We can reduce it really close to one, slightly below, but we can never go truly zero because when we tried that, if, you know, I mean, to be ridiculous, if two electrons went across and went back into the grid, the power company said, you just sold to our grid, you have to disconnect. So we shifted the amp point up to one AC amp. Well, it just so happens that one AC amp times 240 volts is about 240 watts. This refrigerator and freezer is less than 200. This is a refrigerator and freezer turning on. I know it because that's what my refrigerator and freezer look like in my gear. So what happens is you've got a 200 watt load. We have to let one AC amp through. We can't help. Grid zero does not work well with very low loads. Because of that waste one AC amp, I mean, if you were to increase the amps, then we could start blending it in and working it around a little bit. So what we did is we sat here and looked at this and said, well, let's try going to mini grid. This is the same system, the same house, same load structure. Matter of fact, exactly the same. I picked a day where five kilowatts here, and in the grid zero, we had five kilowatts. Here from the grid, 4.8, here 1.1. Look at this. Now, by choosing the mode, and it's not just choosing the mode, it's looking at what you're doing and being have this graphing in front of you and, you know, kick back, have a beer, have a cup of coffee, and sit here and analyze this. So what happens is we did 6.3 from the grid zero, and virtually this turned into an off-grid system, at least with its loads. We ran the refrigerator and freezer all night. You could see the state of charge come down in the morning. Solar started charging. Wham, look at that. We went back up to basically 100% and we ran down all night. Beautiful little system. They sized this just about perfectly. Uh, it, it was just wonderful to do this. And we increased the solar by six times, reduced the grid, same loads. So if you look at this, here was grid zero. Uh, Okay, and let me go back over here. Here's mini grid in three days, and that's the beauty of this. You could look at the voltage, you could click on voltage here, and you would see exactly the voltage you were getting on these batteries. Uh, these are Aquion batteries, I believe, but you can see the state of charge. Low, sun comes up, you make it to 100%, you can see the peak. We run the loads all day, at night we, we run off the batteries, do it again the next day, do it again the next day, 17.8 kilowatt hours from the grid, or from the solar, zero from the grid. Now, if we go to grid zero three days, now let me try something here. Go three days on grid zero, we did 3.9 kilowatts because of the load structure. It's not that grid zero doesn't work, it's not that it's a bad, bad, um, bad, uh, uh, mode. What it is, it's a tool. And a tool's a tool, and you should use the proper tool for the proper job. In this job here, mini grid work great. It's the proper tool for this one. Doesn't mean it's going to work good in every system, but being able to see this is the strongest part almost. You can make a change and watch the change over time. Hey, that decreased my yield, I'm going to go to something else. I'm going to figure something else out. I'm going to look at my voltage, how low do I want to go. Uh, all these adjustments can be done. In, um, in mini-grid, let's go back. In mini-grid, part of it is, is saying, I'm going to take my batteries down to some level for some amount of time. So when I hit that level for that amount of time, I'm going to go back to the grid. Here, it was so well balanced, we never ever went back to the grid. He was virtually off grid for three days here and really producing, doing the best he could. That's pretty interesting. So um, here's grid zero with better loads. And this is a much larger system. He's got 9.4 kilowatt hours of solar, or kilowatts of solar. And um, he's got large loads. You can see uh, 4.5 here. 
getting up to some of these larger loads here. And you can see the solar, yeah, it wakes up in the morning, starts charging, it's helping to run the loads, the grid, as the solar goes up, the grid comes down, boom, does a little bit all day long, solar comes in, the batteries hit 100% here, and the solar tapers off and just runs the amount of loads, so pretty cool. Now, this is a much larger system, uh, in one day he did 34 kilowatt hours from the grid is 50, so close to 50% reduction in um, grid usage. Pretty cool. Cut your power bill in half, got to like that. So here's something else. Imagine you tried this with mini grid. Here grid zero can really contribute, but with mini grid, say I went up and I hit 100%, and I said, okay, I'm going to reject the grid. Now you have to have a large enough battery bank to really run these loads for an appreciable amount of time. If you do, great, but now maybe you're purchasing a lot of batteries that you may not necessarily want to buy. Maybe your customer doesn't want to buy that much batteries. He just wants to get through the evening. And so, you know, these are decisions that you can quantify with this. And uh, it, it's, it was really an education for myself, too, just to walk through this and see what is going on and what's happening. Uh, this was interesting. I was watching that system, and I had been looking at it on and off for, oh, probably a week or two. And I can't do this for every system, but it was one of them things. I took an interest to this, and I every morning I would go and look at it and just make some analysis, maybe make a change, maybe just monitor it to make sure uh, everything was all right. I would call the people and explain to them, hey, I did this for this reason. Okay. So somewhere along the way, I looked, and I went, wow, he went back to grid here. What happens? I mean, for up till now, you saw the three-day graph. We would be off-grid, charge up, off-grid, charge up. It was beautiful. It was just going along. Why here? And you can look, and you can see how yeah, the loads are pretty much, wait a second, somewhere right in here, we've got an increase in loads. You can see the loads got a little bit bigger, and they're consistently. And in my mind, this is why, in my mind, someone in that house probably turned on a fan. It's getting warmer. I want to have some air movement. I'm going to turn on a fan. I think that's what this is. I didn't call up them and ask, but it, it, it just makes so much sense. I, I have to think I'm right. Uh, I could be wrong. But at any rate, what this is, is you see this increased usage, and because of this increased usage, we went off the grid. The load was 6.8. We were used to a 5 kilowatt hour load. Wow, by increasing at 1.8 kilowatts, by 10 o'clock at night, we went off grid. If this is a fan, maybe a small air conditioner, who knows? Whatever load this is, it made us go off the grid. Is there any possibility we could take this load and shift it to the morning hours or noon? Because here, we've got plenty of solar. The batteries are basically about 100%. Why not run this load during these times when you have solar to run it? These are things that you can see and, and make intelligent changes on. If Without optics, how do you know what load he turned on or what load caused him to go back to the grid? It's just, it, it really gives you the ability to ponder the situation and make intelligent choices. Uh, back to the grid, it looks like at this point here, the batteries were at 49.4. It was approximately 60%, 59%. Very cool. So he went back to the grid here at uh, 9 o'clock at night. Well, basically by 9.30 or 10, he's back on the grid. So that's it, it's just fun to be able to look at this. I uh, uh, The other day um, on my system, I was noticing it was cloudy. It wasn't producing much. And... Uh, I was watching Edge of Cloud events. Uh, that was yesterday. Went back and looked, and you don't see the Edge of Cloud here, but I was watching my donut, and I could see my 5.7K solar go up to uh, six, 620 watts, 6.2 watts, something like that, a kilowatt. And you go, wow, okay. And you look out, and there's these 
partially clouds all over. I always experience the edge of cloud effect. Pretty cool. So um, someone in an earlier session says, what does a solar eclipse look like? Oh, what a great question. Let's go look. Let's see. Let's go to the calendar. That was Monday the 21st, about 10 o'clock in the morning. And you see it waking up, starting to produce, starting to produce, and then 10 o'clock, not much. Now, was it cloudy or was that? It was a beautiful sunny day. So let's go to the, the day before that and look and see what 10 o'clock was. You could come at the, the, the day prior. 10 o'clock, pretty healthy. My array is doing pretty good by then. Let's go to the, the day after. There's the solar. Uh, let's see. Let's go to... Here's the eclipse, here's the day after. So the day before and the day after, in the 10 o'clock hour, I was putting out some pretty good kilowatt hours, but on the day of the eclipse, hardly anything at all. Pretty interesting, fun to see. Um, so yeah, these are some of the things you can do with optics, but again, the, the adjustability, should you forget something, you don't have to put a truck on the ground to go do things. I can make changes to my system virtually any place in the world. As long as I've got an internet and I can talk to my gear, I can go make changes. Uh, it's, it's quite a powerful tool. So we're about 20 minutes into this, and I went a little faster with this one. So I'm going to go back and see see if I could uh, do anything else to uh, explain this or make it better. Um, yeah, just uh, it's fun to watch the solar curve. That's a pretty good solar curve there, you know. Uh, Peaks during the day, stops down at night. Uh, again, I've got the FM100, so I'm hoping that's uh, we're going to get that going pretty soon, I hope. Uh, battery voltage is this. Uh, when you're making, let's go to the device map, and let's go back and look at these two modes, because let's go to the inverter, and look at the adjustments on these modes, because, you know, adjustments can be good or bad. Let's go to battery charging. And let's say I'm on mini grid, and I'm saying if my batteries go to 48 volts and they stay there for seven minutes, reconnect to the grid. The grid is there, it's present on the AC input, but we're telling it in mini grid, don't use the grid. Disable it, pretend like you're an off grid inverter and just start running the loads. So this is powerful. The lowest this can go is 44 volts. I was talking to a gentleman in Hawaii again, I love that place, and uh, he said, well, my batteries can go down to 36 volts. If you can only go to 44, what, you know, I'm not really using my batteries as much as I'd like. Well, that brought up a pretty big conversation because you can say, I can go to 48 volts for, let's go there for seven minutes and let my battery go down there and let's go there for seven minutes and how low did my voltage go with my load structure? If it went to 47.9, all right, maybe I can increase this time. Let's take this to 14 minutes, and I'm going to hit 48, 4 volts, and then 14 minutes later, where is my voltage at with this load structure? It's something you could slowly get more and more out of your batteries simply by adjusting this time. Now here's the, the point that uh, people don't understand or, or forget. If I tell my batteries to go down to 48 volts and I reconnect to the grid and there's a storm and the grid drops out, now my battery's at our low point already and how long is that storm gonna last? Is the solar gonna be there to help charge this up? Or if it's in the evening, if I take my batteries down to 48 volts or 44, wherever the setting is, and I happen to lose AC power, what becomes to the system? These are questions that you wanna ask. Also, you've got the low battery cutout. It's set to 42. So if I say go to 44 for 25 minutes, and I happen to hit 42 volts, Wow, you know what? I did that the other day. I, I forgot a load on my system, and with an AC input, I told it, do not use the grid. 
So I had dropped the grid. I was running my batteries. I wanted to cycle my batteries. I went to sleep with a load on that load. A thousand watt load ran all night. In the morning, I woke up. I heard the load. and went, oh, no. I went over to my system. And even though I told it not to use the grid, because I hit low battery cutout, if you're inverting with no AC input, it says, okay, I will not use the batteries anymore. I'm going to stop inverting because you told me to. So I had a grid. I told it, don't use it. And I ran down to low battery cutout. And the inverter was smart enough to go, you know, you're not that smart. I'm going to use the grid. I'm at low battery cutout. I know you want me to run these loads. And I have a perfectly grid there, good grid that you told me not to use. So I walk, woke up. I walk over and make some coffee. And there's a red light on my mate. And I go, oh, what's going on? And I look. I'm at low battery. Uh, low battery. Hey, you hit low battery. I've accepted the grid. I had the charger off, so the grid was running the loads. The inverter wouldn't charge from the grid. Open the door, and I had my coffee roaster going out on the front porch, and I burnt my coffee beans. Imagine the horror. At any rate, the system protected itself, and that is pretty cool. Uh, it did the right thing even though I wasn't able to. So that's some of these adjustments. Uh, uh, mini grid's the same thing. I can take my batteries down to a low level for this amount of time, but if I take them there, what are the repercussions if something else happens? And that's where, that's where thinking about these things in a logical manner and being able to go over and say, all right, I'm going to go to 44 volts for one minute or seven minutes. What really happens What's the consequences of events that can happen happening? If you say, I never lose the grid, well, great. Maybe take your batteries down. Maybe use them. If you lose the, use the grid from time to time, I don't want to take them that low. It depends on where you're at. Uh, they send me quite a few places around this world, and there's some places that lose the grid constantly, up, down, up, down. There's other places where you never use the grid. There's other places where there are no grids. These are what we're trying to do with all the modes and all the adjustments you can make. So I'm going to, we've got about, you know, some minutes left. So again, you know, the consequence of these is what you really have to do. And um, just be aware that sometimes, as I did the other day, I put on a load, I told it don't use the, the grid, and I ran my batteries down. There's consequences to all these settings. Mm, cool, 4.5 solar. So, uh, yeah, it's just interesting. It's, it's, it's really nice to be able to see this. And for troubleshooting and for just adjustments, this is one of the nicer tools out there, I believe. Of course, you know, I'm prejudiced. But. So that's it. You know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. I'm going to open up the screen. And let me pull this up so that I can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to go to questions. And if you have any questions, why don't you go ahead and ask them. And I'll see them as they come up. So I don't know how many people are sitting in on this. But if you have any questions, please do. Uh, and I will, uh, I'll continue to talk. I'll watch this. So here we go. 48. And I don't see any questions right now, so I will go ahead and close this box. And I'll just try to keep keep an eye out of that, and uh, we'll just see. So again, adjustability and accountability, and the ability to um, um, make changes on the fly is what's really nice. I do see a question. Let me come over here. Huh, I don't see it here. Interesting. I thought I saw a question pop up. Show answer questions. Questions. Hmm. Sorry for the silence. I'm trying to figure out the question box here. You see this? Hmm. No, I don't. Sorry, there's a question that I don't see the whole. See this. 
Yes, I do see this. Someone's trying to get, establish communication. And let me try this again. Ah, what is a software platform written in Java? Hello, Ian. Uh, we have the, a question here. What is the software platform? This is going to be Modbus. Uh, we use a Modbus based communication on the mate and with the access port. So this isn't Java, it's in Modbus. So that's it. And with the access port, you can write your own software. Uh, you bet, Ian. And so, you know, with what we did with the access port, it's a little bit cheaper mode of communication, but you can make your own Modbus programs to perform just like this is if you know Modbus. If you don't know Modbus, don't use it because, you know, really from tech support or even app engineering, we're not Modbus programmers and we won't be able to offer you much. It, it's a tool by engineers for engineers. So that's what I would say about the Modbus. Although with the, op, with the uh, access port, you still can connect to optics with an, app, with an access port. So it's still there. So um, that's that and 12.51. So we've got about nine more minutes and I don't see any more questions. And let me close this up. So yeah, and again, I guess I can really say is it, it's, 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 I've really enjoyed mine, uh, the ability to adjust things. I travel all over the world, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, uh, my pump, my watering pump, on a switch so that when I want to, uh, the other day I was in Africa, and it was really hot here, and I had to have a friend come over and water my garden, and I thought, well, why don't I hook it up to the inverter's aux out, I can trigger a relay which will give power to my well pump because I just walk over and turn on a switch and the well pump runs. I could leave that switch on and operate that from my uh, from optics anywhere in the world. So it would be pretty fun to be talking to somebody in Africa going, excuse me, I think my uh, garden's getting dry. I'm going to water the garden. And that would be a pretty powerful thing too. So and each one of our, our inverters has an aux out. All of the charge controllers have an aux out. The uh, FNDC has a relay, and the radian not only has a 12 volt auxiliary, it also has a, uh, a a relay. So all these things are usable, and you can come in to uh, set them up, pre-programmed, make them do things, or just leave a load on there and say, you know, I'm going to do this because of this reason, and I'm going to shut it off when I'm done. I'm going to water my garden for 15 minutes. I, I'm hoping to hook that up over this next weekend, although the watering season's almost over. Well, listen, you guys, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to let you go. I know it's a bit early, about seven minutes, but I kind of spoke in my piece, and, you know, everybody's time is valuable, and I really appreciate you guys showing up and asking the questions, and have a good day, and I'm going to shut her down right now. So, again, thank you very much.